Hey Sam Phoenix, so the topic of today is about skinny guys with a fast metabolism that find it hard to gain weight, which I used to be one of these people. I said so many times that I'm trying to gain muscle and I just cannot gain muscle, but that is not true for me or other people, as I've proved with my own personal experience. I personally, around three years ago, within a year, embarked on a calisthenics journey where I went from 60 kilos, as you can see here, to 70 kilos. Before I was very skinny, weak and frail, and then I went to very lean, ripped and muscular. And this was the first time that I'd ever transformed my body. If you haven't seen that video, it has over 6 million views, biggest video on this channel, click the link for it up above and go and watch that now. And then around two years after that, my health got completely destroyed. And within four months, I managed to go from a bit more muscular than I was when I started my year transformation. And then I managed to gain 14.6 kilos in just four months. If you haven't seen that transformation video that just got uploaded, I put a link for that up above. So there's been two times that I've gained a significant amount of muscle mass. And I've had a lot of other people that have watched these videos and then tried to gain quite a significant amount of muscle mass like I did. But they just don't get the results. They tell me this time and time again in the comment section, on my YouTube videos, on emails, people that I see face to face. And I've known so many people as friends in my real life that have been super skinny, that have had the same issues going on that I used to have before I transformed my body. So why is that? So if you wanna know the answers as to why, then make sure you watch this video from start to finish because it's gonna share so much valuable, effective information that can help you go within the direction that you truly desire to get a muscular body. So the things we're gonna talk about is diet, training, rest, and sleep. These are the most important things. So let's get onto the diet first. The majority of skinny people, pretty much all of them, when they say they find it hard to gain weight, well actually, when you normally get them to start weighing their food and tracking their food on a website such as Chronometer, where you weigh your food, put in the food that you're eating the weight on this website, and it tells you how many calories you're eating, most people start to find out that they're eating in a massive calorie deficit, which means they are burning more calories within a day than they are burning. Which what I wanna say is, if you're a newbie to working out, within the first six months to a year, with a calorie restriction diet, you can gain muscle for sure. But after that time period, you're probably gonna find it pretty much near on impossible to do so. But if you're someone that is really struggling to gain weight, even if you're a newbie, then you wanna start tracking your calories and working out if you're in a calorie deficit, because it is gonna make it a lot harder without a doubt. So what you wanna do is look at a video that I put a link down below for that's done by Matt Ogus, one of the best videos where you can work out how many calories you need to eat to bulk up which means you're eating in a way that you are eating sufficient calories to actually build muscle. And what I wanna say is there's a lot of people say that you need to go on a bare mode diet where you're just eating so many more calories than you are burning to gain muscle. But if you're eating in such a calorie surplus, like thousands of calories above what you're actually burning within a day, you will gain muscle, but you're also gonna gain a lot of fat at the same time. And that's just not what I personally go for, I like to do lean bulking. So I'm eating a sufficient amount of calories that I am actually burning within a day, and then I'm normally eating a bit above that. For most people, you only normally need to eat about 500 to 1,000 calories above your maintenance calories, which if you don't know about maintenance calories, that's the amount of calories that you're eating within a day is how many you're roughly burning within a day. So yeah, you can just go absolutely crazy and do what is known as dirty bulking, where you're just eating everything inside that you possibly can, but do you really wanna gain loads of fat at the same time? It's not good for your cardiovascular health, it makes your blood pressure go up, and it's just not necessarily gonna make you feel the best as well. And then what you need to do is, after you've gained loads of fat and gained muscle, you then need to go on a calorie restriction diet to then lose a lot of the fat. A lot of time people then end up losing a lot of muscle as well, because they have to be in such a calorie deficit to get rid of the fat that they've gained, and then they're on this whole yo-yo, so it's like calorie restrict, lose the fat, dirty bulk, like crazy, gain fat, and they're just back and forth and it's just not good for your mental state of mind and it's not something that I do or recommend to anyone in any shape or form. And then in that video where you can work out how many calories you need to be eating to gain weight, he's also gonna talk about how much protein, fats and carbs that you eat. But what I would say is don't worry about your fat intake. Just make sure that you're eating sufficient amount of carbs because I'm telling you now, I've done it before where I've done extremely low carb diets or no carb diets such as the keto diet or carnival diet and it just makes me lose weight rapidly. It is the 
worst diet for skinny people. It's just like, I just cannot gain muscle on that whatsoever. So don't do that. Unless you're wanting to shred down really, really quickly, then that's the only time that I would recommend it for skinny people. But yeah, what I would recommend is just make sure that you're eating sufficient amount of calories, eating a lot of carbs, and then eating a significant amount of protein. For most people, you're gonna be wanting to hit around anywhere from around 0.75 grams per pound of body weight to one gram per pound of body weight of protein. And you may be thinking, well, how to work that out? Well, the video that I'll link down below is gonna help you with that. And what I wanna say is, with my year transformation, I was actually in a super high carb diet with not that much protein. So I was on a vegan diet, which isn't the best for getting protein. And yes, I gained a lot of muscle mass, but when I then lost all the weight due to my health being destroyed, I went on this four month transformation and went on a super high carb, super high protein diet, where I was eating around 200 grams of protein a day, I gained Gain way more muscle within a shorter period of time. That can also be due to me having muscle memory, which means from me having a lot more muscle in the past and gained it before, it was a lot easier for me to gain muscle in the four month transformation than in the year transformation as well. So that's something to take into consideration. But yeah, I definitely say from my own personal experience, eating a lot more protein definitely, without a doubt, helped me gain more muscle than I managed to actually gain within a year. I gained 4.6 kilograms more within four months than I did within the year transformation. That's quite a significant amount of additional weight to gain. And that is the heaviest weight that I've ever been in my whole entire life. And also saying that's good to mention about those two comparisons with the year transformation, the four month transformation is with the year transformation, I was doing intermittent fasting. So a lot of hours of the day, I wasn't eating food. But with the four month transformation, I eat from morning until night, which means I'm getting calories throughout the day and a lot of protein throughout the day, which protein is key for for having optimal nitrogen balance, which helps with maximizing muscle growth. And then I'm obviously getting a lot more protein synthesis for my muscles throughout the day. So I would say avoid intermittent fasting at all costs if you're someone that is skinny and you're finding it hard to gain muscle. So number two is training. So say you've got your diet on absolute point. You're having enough calories, so you're in a calorie surplus every single day. You're doing that consistently, just being on point with your diet, eating sufficient amount of protein. But still, you're finding with your consistent workout program, you're not gaining muscle mass, then it's more than likely only going to be that there is something wrong with your workout program. It doesn't necessarily mean that it's a bad one. It would just mean that there's some things that you're not necessarily aware of that are not contributing with muscle growth. The first one that we're gonna talk about <laughs> with this one, and I see this time and time again at the gym that I work out. I've watched so many people and I'm like, what? are you doing? 99% of the people that I observe in my gym, and it's a very big gym, a lot of people go there, they're just not training hard enough. So what do I mean when they're not training out hard enough? Well, they're just repping out the reps on a specific exercise. It could be like lap pull downs, and they're not breathing that heavy. They're not sweating at all. They don't look like it's challenging for them, or it just like it's a breeze. I could just do this all day long. So what is happening is there's a lot of people with not training hard enough where they're just doing reps way too fast or they're just having way too low of weight. You don't need to have super, super heavy weight unless you're someone that's trying to train to be a strong man or a power lifter. It's just not absolutely necessary or they're just stopping way too soon. So you need to work out which one of those things you're doing or are you doing all of them or just a couple of them? Just literally, when you're working out, observe yourself and you can easily work this out. You need to push yourself to your limit and your muscles to actually work the muscles as effectively as possible so then when you're resting and recovering, you've done enough damage to them so then they can start to grow the following days after your workout sessions. It's really, really that simple. And what I wanna say is, with my new transformation, I always did to failure training. And then with the four month transformation, for about two months I did to failure training and then I found scientific research from Jeff Nippard's YouTube channel, I put a link for the video down below, where where he found certain scientific research comparing a group of men that was doing to failure training. And then the second group of men in this study were training with about one to three reps left in the tank. And they compared their muscle growth at the end of 
the study. And they found the muscle growth was the same with each two groups that were in this study. So once I found this out, during my four month transformation, two months in, I started training where each exercise, I would finish my exercise that I was doing with one to three reps within the tank. But what I wanna say is you need to be careful with this because you might think that you've only got one to three less. You might be on an exercise where you think you've only got one to three reps left. And then you can actually be like, okay, I'm just gonna see how many more I can do. And then sometimes I've tried this myself, you will find that you could do a lot more reps than that. So this is something you need to experiment with and just find out via listening to your body when working out when you are near the point of failure and stopping just before that point. And the reason why people like myself say actually do the one to three reps left in the tank rather than the failure training, because yes, to failure training did work very well for me during my year transformation and two months into my four month transformation. But guess what starts to happen as you're doing your full week workout and as the weeks go on, you're gonna find that it's gonna be very taxing on your central nervous system and just on your body as a whole. So you're gonna have lower energy levels, strength is not gonna be high and your workouts are just gonna to start to diminish over time where you can't do as much volume or reps or you can't do as much weight and so on, which is going to, over a period of time, affect your overall progress. You're just gonna to start to not gain as much muscle as you possibly can, and you're not gonna to continue to gain more strength. It's just gonna be a downward trend. So at first it can go upwards like this, but then your overall progress will start to suffer. And this is what I found at certain times, and this is why I stopped doing it. But when I only train one to three reps, I find that I can train more consistently, and I'm still training really, really hard, and I get better results. And then I feel better in my everyday life, where I'm not just feeling like I need to rest and recover and lay around and do nothing all day long because I've burnt myself out. And then with the training, there's also lack of consistency. If you're going to the gym or if you're doing body weight workouts at home and you're only working out like one to two days a week and the length of your sessions are quite short, then it's gonna affect you gaining muscle. It's really as simple as that. With my year transformation, I did only train three times a week. I talk about that in another video in more detail. If you wanna see that video, then click the video up above. But what I'm saying short in this video is that when I was doing those three workouts a week, I was training really, really intense, like I said, to a failure. It would take quite a few days for my muscles to actually fully recover so I could train again. And I wasn't doing leg day, so that removes a day that I don't need to train, so then you can actually train less days. I wouldn't recommend that if you're someone that wants to grow your muscles in your legs. So yeah, I managed to do that within a year, gaining all that muscle with only working out three times a week. But then with the bodybuilding, because I switched from calisthenics to bodybuilding when I switched to the four month bodybuilding transformation. So if you're someone that just wants to work out three times a week, then you could do this. And so it's very important to remember we're training hard. If you're training hard, and that's how you start when you start working out, but then as you start to get stronger, and build more muscle, you're not consistently modifying your workouts in a way to make it harder over time. So you keep doing the same weight, the same amount of reps and so on, then you're not doing things for your body to get stronger and gain more muscle. It's really as simple as that. It's gonna become very adapted to what you're doing. So you need to do one of these three specific things that are proven through scientific research to gain muscle mass and optimize muscle growth with whatever type of strength training that you are doing. So one way that you can make it harder, if you're doing bodybuilding, you can increase the weight on the exercise that you're doing over a period of time, which is known as progressive overload. And the second way is to get your muscles to grow when working out is to get the muscle to burn as much as you possibly can. The more that it burns and the longer that it burns when you're doing an exercise, say like a bicep curls, the more it's gonna give you muscle gains. This is proven through scientific research. So what you can also do, once things start to get easier, you can start slowing down the reps or you can do pauses at certain parts of the rep that you are doing or with whatever exercise, or you can increase the amount of reps that you are doing. And then the third way is you just need to really make sure you do the stretch part of the exercise. So for example, with bicep curls, I see a lot of people where they're just going to like here. But what you wanna do is stretch all the way out. So exercises that you can stretch the muscle out 
fully. Scientific research proves that this is one of the other factors that is key for growing muscle. So you can do all of these three things together if you want to. You can do two of them or you can do one of them. You can switch them up at times. You're going to use different ones at different times just like I do with many other people. And then another thing with training is people just not working out consistently enough. So they might be training a couple of times this week and then one day this week and then three days this week and so on. So you need to make sure with whatever workout program that you're following that you are doing it consistently enough. And when you are a beginner, it's normally best to work out around five days a week. But if you find that your lifestyle just doesn't allow for that because you're very busy or you're finding that it's just too much in your body and you're not recovering quick enough, then you can experiment with training less days a week. And then there's just some exercises that people say are amazing or that you think are amazing that you're trying and you don't really feel it that much in the muscle that you're trying to work out. I've tried certain things that people said are just gonna give you amazing muscle growth benefits on a certain part, say like the chest, for example, with certain chest exercises. And then I try it out and I'm like, eh, it isn't that good. So experiment, try out certain things, see how it feels on the muscle that you're trying to work. If it doesn't feel that great and you know that you're doing the form perfect and you're just executing it flawlessly then try a different exercise this is what I've done over my own journey with bodybuilding with transforming my body in four months with the bodybuilding and it's just a really really good way to do it because it doesn't matter what other people tell you the best what may be the best of them may not be the best for you you only know what is the best for you by trying out things that's just called life and the last thing with training is mind muscle connection and if you don't know about this I'll explain to you it's very very simple so say you get on a chest press machine you put the weight on and and you're going like this, you're pushing it. It's like, yeah, I'm working my chest. And it's like, you're not really feeling a burn in your chest. So there'll be a lot of people that keep their back flat the whole time. So then they're not popping their chest out. You wanna pop your chest out as much as you possibly can. It's gonna engage your chest a lot more. And then when you're pushing, you want to squeeze the chest. You want to flex it completely. So when you're pushing, you have them flex and you're pushing more with your chest than you are with the other muscle groups that are used. Because there's a lot of people that would just be working their arms a lot more and their front deltoid. So when you're actually having this mind-muscle connection where you're being very focused upon the muscle, that's what I recommend. Keep your awareness on that muscle. Keep it tightened as much as you can. Flex fully and push through it and squeeze as much as you can. So this is something that will come with experience and just being as mindful as you can when you are executing any exercise. And the one last thing we're gonna quickly focus upon, which I need to end quite quickly because people start sleep, sleeping? No, sweeping outside my house. But yeah, we're gonna be talking about sleep and rest. If you're someone that is going to bed very late, you're not getting enough sleep when you are actually sleeping, then guess what it starts to do? It has a negative effect on your hormone reduction such as testosterone and other hormones hormones that are absolute key for giving you the best muscle growth benefits that you are trying to get with whatever you're trying to do, such as the things that I've mentioned in this video. So try and get your sleep on point, try and get at least eight hours of sleep a night, try and not go to bed any later than 10 p.m. Most people going to bed at like 11, 12 o'clock at night. But it's been shown that if you're going to bed quite late, it actually impacts human growth hormone reduction, which naturally occurs when you're asleep and starts at around 11 p.m. And human growth hormone is absolute key to give you those muscle gains. So if you're someone that is just not making this a priority, you need to really work on this as much as you possibly can. And then something that ties in with this is stress. And this affects you in a negative way and doesn't give you a lot of rest throughout the day because you want to be making it so throughout the day that you're not highly stressed out and stimulated throughout the day. Because again, this has been shown to lower DHEA, which is an androgen hormone within the body. It's a precursor hormone that basically turns into almost every other hormone within the body. And then again, it's gonna mess up your overall hormone production. So if you wanna learn more on that, make sure you do your research up online. But this is something that I've been very, very on top of for many, many years when transforming my body. Because one, it makes me feel the best in my everyday life. It makes my mental health the best my cognitive function and it also makes me as strong as possible and as muscular as I possibly can be naturally. So that's it from me in this video. Got any questions? Leave them down below. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to receive a lot more videos from me on a regular basis. So as always, stay happy, stay fit and go and get those gains. Peace.